The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Wizard Swap, an- another on-off ramp for Monero. Uh, respected swap. in the Monero. You're, you're a big fan of Wizard Swap. That's I good. Am. Tony, how's it going? Thanks for thanks hey. for waiting. Sorry for all yeah. the mix up. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Tony. Hey guys, jumping hey. on. Yeah, so uh, I want to kind of extend on uh, Monerotopia, and you can use Tux twenty four. There's Vlad twenty four, and uh, there's Tony twenty four. <laughs> so there's quite a couple of codes. So just use any of them and get your ten percent off for her Monerotopia. Uh, Vlad is actually from uh, Romania, so that's, ah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Have you ever met him? Have you ever met Vlad? No, you know, I was going to meet him at the um, Palma de Mallorca conference two years ago. Mm. Remember when? Yeah. Right, right, right. That's when I first heard, heard about him. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there's quite a couple of codes. Let me start to share my screen. Vlad, for those who don't know what Tony's talking about, Vlad will be the host at Monerotopia, which uh, we're very excited. He'll be the MC. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So not I, th- I thought he was... Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, wasn't he a Bitcoin maxi? Not to, I think he was most like a Bitcoin maxi. Yeah, he, he he kind of was, but he's he's always been open to different different things. He he was never really anti Monero, but he was critical of Monero, and he he was he was a big Wasabi guy. So he kind of saw that as the solution, Wasabi making uh, Bitcoin private. But he's since kind of become disillusioned by that a little bit, and he's realized that Monero is. One of the best, if not the best, way of transacting, on you know, in an anonymous, private way. So it's, it's, it's exciting to see him, you know, become more and more aligned with Monero. Yeah, and he, yeah, inter- he interviewed Fluffy yeah. Pony back in the day. There's a great interview that he did. <laughs> uh, so I recommend people check that out if they want to go down memory lane. But uh, I think he, he's he's more pro Monero than ever. But he's really one of these guys that's just you know interested in it for the digital cash use case, and that's how, how he's found his way to Monero. That's awesome. Yeah, especially we shared uh, Romanian communism, so <laughs> we both come from the same place. Um, Tux, uh, can you actually put my screen on? Oh uh, uh, yeah, pull it up. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, guys, uh, you can use a couple of codes, 2024, Vlad24, Tux24, bunch, uh, 1-800-1 Aerocopia. There's a bunch of codes, so make sure that you use it when you buy your ticket. Uh, again, I recommend buying a VIP ticket, you get the dinner and a bunch of other things. So uh, yeah, it's an amazing conference. So now let's go into the actual news section. First thing, a new all-time high hash rate for Monero. Now, if we actually go on the website, let's go over here. Um, so we're seeing a pretty sustained all-time highs. We have reached 3.5 gigahertz on, let's see, it was October 16th. Now, the all-time high is 3.71 gigahertz, which on February 27th, 2023. So we're pretty close to all-time highs. and it's just crazy. Like just historically, we used to have 11 megahertz and 2020 going to the gigahertz, 1.2 to today's what we have pretty sustained levels, 3.1, 3.5 we just hit. And uh, we're looking for the Monerotopia effect, which is going to be a lot more transactions, um, just a lot more usage overall. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, now, talking about Vlad, and if you're watching, ciao, salut. Um, so he said he's really bullish on Litecoin privacy now that M Web is available on Cake Wallet. You no longer have to run a full node on the desktop computer to get privacy features. The world is now ready for private swaps from XMR to Litecoin to be later spent at millions of merchants. Uh, so responded on X. I already see a lot of Litecoin Monero swaps because Litecoin is so easy to acquire with fiat and now you can do that even more privately uh, than before. Pretty damn powerful combo, and it is. And I did notice Vlad um, Vlad's description on X. So he says, no more buying Bitcoin until privacy improves. Now outperforming Bitcoin with the Freedom Gains Fund, XMR, Litecoin, Zcash, Zeno, name. Uh, so 
actually, since you mentioned Bitcoin and privacy, let's take it to to this. So for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin. This is Naval on Bitcoin, and uh, Mera Monteo uh, retweeted, and he says that. Well, he said, uh, Naval said, uh, Bitcoin is a privacy nightmare, and privacy coins are the feature of digital cash, which it is from so many reasons. Uh, but I mean. People don't know, and we discussed in the show, Monero is not just about the privacy, but it's about a lot of other things uh, that it has, still emission, a lot of stuff. So uh, also, guys, if you have anything that you want to say in the chat on YouTube, I'm watching that on the site too. Um, so you can, you know, you can even give me links if you'd like, and we can go over it live uh, or any questions you have. Now, let's watch this video. It's two minutes. If you had a time machine, what would you change about the original software architecture of Bitcoin? If Bitcoin is going to go mainstream, it is going to have to be adopted by TradFi. There's no way around it. That said, I think Bitcoin has, uh, you know, it's obviously has the highest hash rate, the most security, the OG design, the best token distribution, and probably kind of the best uh, technical architecture from a security perspective, the smallest attack surface. So Bitcoin is, uh, you know, the OG for digital gold. But there are a couple of things it just hasn't done that well. Um, you know, you can argue about scaling and lightning, and it's, I think that's less the issue. I think it's more that it's not programmable. And from a security perspective, that may be a feature, not a bug. And it's not private. And from an adoption perspective, that might be good in the short to medium term, but I think in the long term, that suffers. And I think when Bitcoin was originally designed, uh, the hope was that it would be distributed mostly through mining. And because of that, you know, it wouldn't be traced. Um, but now, because it's all distributed by purchases, and you have KYC, AML everywhere, it is traced, and it's an open blockchain. So it's kind of a privacy nightmare. So I think, you know, if there's one thing that needs to be upgraded in Bitcoin down the road is its privacy, or it's going to lose a lot of its function to privacy coins. Or it may just be the case that Bitcoin stays public and traceable, so it's more widely adopted and harder to steal and get away with it and those kinds of things. And people just use privacy coins as pure cash when they want to transact privately, they convert from Bitcoin to a privacy coin, transact in the privacy coin, and then maybe go back to Bitcoin or something like that. So not quite sure how it plays out. It's hard to say I would change any part of Bitcoin's design because obviously it has worked. And why mess with something that works? You know, it's Chesterton's fence. It's not to say it's perfect, but who am I to say what parts are imperfect? I guess I would like to see if it were me personally, if I could wave a magic wand with no other trade offs, and that's hard to say, I would want to see. Um, more privacy in Bitcoin. That would be nice. Or more pri and, and I would like to see broader distribution. Um, it feels like most of the distribution is done, but most of the world hasn't adopted it yet. Ideally, it would be distributed much more slowly as the rest of the world is adopting it. Finally, it would be good if there was a model for funding developers, but I know that's outside of the protocol and you don't want too much development anyway. Now, that is such a succinct and such a good way to, to talk about Bitcoin and, and its issues and what it's done. And historically, over, over uh, the years, it's moved from uh, so many things uh, as a currency, as a, a tool, uh, as a means of revolution against tyrannical governments, all this stuff uh, to now not probably, you know, it's not good to be used as a monetary tool necessarily, like to spend as cash. So it's with time, people realize what it's good for, what it is, and, and who knows where it's going to be in uh, decades from now, especially when things are going to get worse. What's going to happen to to Bitcoin, um, is it just going to be big organizations owning it? And then the people are going to go into Monero and then JP Morgan, all these people that have uh, Bitcoin, they're just going to, who knows, maybe dump it on, because what's the point of having some Pokemon card that just you own? Maybe they want to go into different assets after. So who, who, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, unless, you know, they, they make some pretty big changes um, in, into Bitcoin from privacy to a lot of stuff, but it shouldn't be an addition. The privacy shouldn't be an addition. It should just be at a protocol level. It should just be the base, just privacy. Like you don't even have to think about adding it or things of that nature. So yeah, that's that's a pretty good way to put it in, in uh, two minutes and a half. <laughs> uh, now, so let's talk about the uh, Slovak uh, government. We had Pavel on. Um, 
So let's talk about the Slovak government and the mRNA vaccines. This is, I actually just, just saw this right now, not long ago. Uh, but the Slovak government is considering banning MR, MR, mRNA. Sorry, that was a mistype on the website. Uh, COVID vaccines following the publication of a controversial report into the management of the pandemic that helped, <laughs> we'll get into this too, helped prompt the country's health minister to quit. So essentially what happened, uh, Peter Kotlar, a member of the ruling Slovak National Party, opposed the vaccination process during the pandemic. Um, he said that it um, the jab alters human DNA have been inadequately tested and are therefore dangerous. He also claimed um, he went on to call the COVID pandemic an act of bioterrorism. Uh, to, yeah, so to all of this, we're going to go into <laughs> this article. So after uh, she heard what's happening, Slovak health minister just decided to, to quit. And it's, <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah, so Slovakia's health minister, Susana Dlinkova, and as Friday, she's stepping down over government backing for a prominent anti-vaxxer and insufficient prioritization of healthcare. Now, it's very interesting. And just notice how they use, they, they really like to use words to categorize people and put them into uh, their own little corner. So for example, anti-vaxxer, conspiracy theorist, all these things that have a very negative connotation and then they portray you in the news outlets as such so that you get attacked, you're being ridiculed and, and all this stuff. Um, yeah, so <laughs> so that's that's interesting coming from Slovakia. I, I did not expect this. Now, and also the uh, first couple of stuff that I want to talk about today are mostly within Europe, and then we're going to go into the into the US and just kind of wrap it all up nicely. But uh, now let's talk about Viktor Orban. So uh, this conference uh, not too, I think, like uh, two weeks ago or a week ago, and uh, basically what. He said in the 17 minute uh, speech is that everyone will agree with me and not with your left wing lies. He talked about a lot here. Also, um, Ursula uh, essentially wants to overthrow the Hungarian government and uh, she wants to put something else in place. Something else, which means that something that the West wants, that Brussels would want uh, to be in place of them. And uh, he, yeah, he talks about a lot of stuff in, in this video. Um, also, just hypocrisies, allegedly uh, buying Turkish and Indian oil, which is in fact Russian, uh, a lot, a lot of stuff. Now, let's go into this article. North Korea troops in Ukraine war called huge escalation risk. So um, NATO just had, I think this Monday, they had a exercise for their nuclear weapons uh, to show off to Russia what NATO has. Well, Russia has their own and they have North Korea and they have China. So it's instead of just showing your your nuclear weapons, you should just stop giving the money, which we're going to get into in a little bit. And we're actually going to go into a little bit of history and geography about Ukraine just to kind of understand um, what, what's what's happening. But instead of doing all this stuff, which just threatens the lives of so many people, just go ahead and um, end it, make a deal that, that, that like, you can just nuke each other to, to death. That's that's ridiculous. Um, and we're going to go into it a little in a little bit, actually, let's take a quick pause. And let's talk about Italy. So Italy shocks crypto community with proposed 42% Bitcoin tax. Used to be 26, now it's 42. In case you're thinking about moving to a certain country because they are maybe more, yeah, they have a bit more mercy. They're a bit more nice when it comes to to taxes. Portugal used to have used to be a tax haven for crypto. Used to have zero, and then uh, we talked about it on the show in the past. They introduced 28% a tax last year. So yeah, I guess 2023. Um, yeah, but Denmark 42. Um, Denmark 42, Norway 38, Finland 33% um, taxes. 
So yeah, quite an interesting move by by Italy. And sometimes maybe it's not that Italy wants. Maybe it's a more European Union push towards really taxing it, uh, so that they can get some money from <laughs> from your money. Uh, now let's go into yeah, let's go into this. So I like we talk about um, North Korea, Ukraine, Russia, all, all this ongoing war. Uh, we just had some pretty bad hurricanes in Florida, tornadoes. Then obviously there's a lot more things going uh, in the whole United States. Um, and, you know, some money could be used, but Biden administration sent another $425 million to Ukraine. Uh, instead, he should probably go to, to Americans. But uh, we are, America is $36 trillion in debt. And the deficits are running at two trillion to three trillion per year. Um, this article from New York Times basically saying the same thing. President Biden spoke by telephone to Zelensky of Ukraine, Zelensky, and uh, yeah, so they just secured another four hundred twenty-five million dollars, which includes munition, armored vehicles, and other weapons. Which is just ridiculous that that it keeps going. But obviously, they want everybody wants it to uh, to keep it going because they they wash off money and they they can gain <laughs> uh, power of their, over this. But Russia is not going to stop. Especially, it's not just Russia now. It's North Korea, other countries. There's nuclear weapons involved, and it's all about uh, Crimea. It's all about also power. Like Putin doesn't want to be at the mercy of these powers, which uh, I understand. I mean, NATO is not the most benevolent organization as well. But, um, and then, so I'm just going to go a little bit over uh, some history on this, and then I'm going to go macro perspective and title back into Monero. But that's why we talked about this stuff. We just talked, uh, we have to talk about how bad the government is and their decisions to really realize that they don't, they really don't care about you and they just want to imprison you through so many ways, whether it's through information, uh, the, that stuff they put in food, uh, so your health is worse. Uh, I think we're probably going to talk about that in a second too. But um, yeah, let's go to, to this image. So for the people watching on Twitter, it's I'm going to show a couple of historical maps. This is today. This is... Uh, Europe of today. So I'm just going to go over this over quick. Uh, you have Romania, and then you have above Ukraine, you have Moldova. Uh, and as you can see, Ukraine is quite big, right? Now, um, let's go to 17, uh, well, 18th century, 1700s. You have, uh, this is what used to be Romania, it used to be three principalities, Moldova, Wallachia, Transylvania. Uh, Transylvania got taken over by the Kingdom of Hungary. They took it over. Uh, Bulgaria above. But who's uh, below? But who's above? I don't see Ukraine. And this is a, what I'm saying right now. It's not against Ukraine. It's, of course, I don't want anybody to be hurt. It's just uh, you know, about the whole, what they should negotiate ultimately to stop this crazy war. Uh, you have Poland. And you have the immense Russia over here, the never-ending Russia. You have Crimea. Uh, one more, um, just one more chart. Uh, 1919, uh, post World War One, Treaty of Versailles. You have Romania, and as you can see right here, Ukraine is very, very small. So, um, could be wrong, but as far as I know, they Ukraine is basically like a Stalinistic uh, creation, artificially made, to plan from Hungary, Romania, uh, Poland. And they created what it is today. Um, yeah, but basically just so we went over this um, this history a little bit. They should just negotiate. They should probably just give back Crimea to Russia. And then they can make a deal. Um, we'll give you Crimea, but you can let Ukraine back in, in, uh, in NATO. Stuff like that. Now let's go over... Yeah, so basically why I wanted to go over this is just it's very important to know history overall, not just about this war, or but just, just in general, it's good to know. 
because they're going to try to take away your rights. They're going to try to misinform you. And it's just important to, to know your history, not about just this again, but just, just in general. Uh, now let's go back to, let's see. Yeah, so we, we kind of covered Europe. Now let's go into the US. I have a couple of things about the US. Uh, things are happening in the US too. Um, against its people, just like anywhere else in the world. Uh, the Defense Department uh, has quietly codified its right to deploy lethal force against its own uh, citizens. So as you can see here, uh, they wrote, uh, kind of made it maybe a bit more uh, difficult to to understand, but basically, so they said assistance in responding with assets with potential for lethality or any situation which it is reasonably foreseeable that providing the requested assistance may involve the use of force that is likely to result in lethal force, including death or serious bodily injury. It also includes all support to civilian law enforcement officials in situations where a confrontation between civilian law enforcement and civilian individuals or groups is reasonably anticipated. So basically, <laughs> assisting and responding with assets, meaning weapons uh, with potential of hurting you, killing you if, if you're against, if you do something, you know, against what they would like you to do. And we've seen a UK, we talked in the past, they can just imprison you for what you like, what, you know, political means that are against the government or things like that. And uh, they're changing stuff quietly and they don't talk about, they don't talk about this on the news. Uh, but they're making all kinds of, uh, of uh, modification. It's kind of like, and uh, as Free Prince wrote on, on X, uh, be warned because once the state moves in silence, it is because it expects resistance. Of course, if this was on the news and they put it in a way that people understand, then, uh, you know, they would, they would revolt or do something about it. But martial law was always the goal. Now, I, IMEI, uh, states can track your phones using IMEI, uh, but you can change it. And in, in this X post, the guy over, Amir goes over um, how you can do, how you can achieve that um, by installing bootloader, uh, changes, tweaks. Um, so it's, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, I'm, but, you know, I'm, obviously there's a lot more that you need to do to be 100% uh, untrackable, but this, this is a good step in the right direction. Um, I've also heard, which may not be true, but that you, you can have your phones next next to each other, and then they just communicate their information between each other, even if, if they're offline. Which, again, I'm not sure if this is true or not. That's what I've heard on an interview, but, you know, they, <laughs> they can track you very, very easily. But again, this is a good step in the right direction. Uh, now let's watch this video. It's one minute. This is from the Unfriend the NYPD video series. And Beijing police can surveil your phone using geo fences. And then Sheila wrote on X, use your phone on airplane mode or replace your spyware device with a secure privacy respecting Google Pixel running Graphene OS. No. You will not miss out on anything because Graphene OS allows you to create a separate profile and sandbox your Uber, Bank, and other spyware apps. So let's watch this. Did you know the NYPD can spy on you through your phone? One way police can surveil or spy on you is through something called a geofence. Geofences are when police get a warrant to draw a line around an area on a map and collect data on all the phones that pass through during a certain period of time. Police know where you were based off of apps on your phone that monitor your location. If a judge won't sign off on a warrant, police can buy the data from companies that collect and sell data. When police use geofences, lots of innocent people become potential suspects, including vulnerable communities like undocumented people and people who have been arrested or incarcerated. To fight back, limit the apps that can access your location data and keep your phone on airplane mode at protests and other sensitive locations. Join the movement to end police surveillance. 
to learn about the latest. So, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay, so we talked about we talked about that a little bit. Now let's talk about Roger Ver, and um, so he's being held captive in a country that he does not reside in, is not a citizen of, does not speak the language of, and does not belong to, because the United States is trying to extradite him uh, to arrest and charge him with tax evasion. And uh, Let's see, I have a video right here. So let's go to this. Aaron Day on X said, this is what true political leadership looks like. Watches uh, Thierry Baudet exposes the violation of due process and the dramatic overreach of the US in its case against crypto pioneer Roger Ver. It's been announced that um, Thierry Baudet, uh, I hope I'm saying his name right, uh, announced he will file a motion with the European Co Council to block Roger Ver's extradition to the United States. He also recommended reading hijacking Bitcoin. So uh, it's two minutes. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and watch this video. Then we have one more and we're going to wrap it up. Roger Ver is a world-beroomed crypto pioneer. Op dit moment zit hij vast in Spanje. Oh, actually, okay. So... Uh, since he's not in, uh, I forgot that it's actually not in, it just has subtitles and probably some of you can't, uh, can't see it, but, um, so I guess I'm just gonna have to link this and you can watch it on, on your own. But yeah, this, this is what it's about. Basically, uh, filing a motion with the European council to block Roger Ver's extradition to, to the United States and may this ignite an international movement of courageous leaders standing up for freedom and and uh, justice. Lastly, we have um, a George, Orwell, George Orwell, 1984, which I, I've read the book. I'm not sure if, I, I don't think this is a direct quote, but um, anyway, so the people will not revolt. They will not look up from their screens long enough to notice what's happening, which is gonna be more and more the case with um, and TikTok and all, and all these social medias are not to blame. It's just that people are being dumped down by, by the educational system um, and all sorts of weaponry by, from the government. And uh, they, they don't care much. They, they don't educate themselves anymore. So they just glued to their screens. The algorithm is just pushing them stupid videos that are senseless and a lot of propaganda. and. Yeah, I'm not so uh, optimistic about the, the the future, but I guess we'll have, gonna have to see. Uh, but yeah, just just like in the book 1984, which I recommend everybody to read. I think that 1984 was nothing compared to what they can really do. It's gonna be 1984 on steroid, <laughs> like trend. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be. I think it could be really, really bad. So. Uh, yeah, that's why I, I like to go in the new section. I like to go over politics, all this stuff, so you guys see what's happening in the world, what crazy things are happening in the world, and kind of direct the direction which we are going. And I just wonder how the new section is going to be in 2030 and what what crazy things we're going to cover then. Um, but yeah, hopefully I didn't bore you too much of the little bit of uh, uh, history on Ukraine and all of that. Just wanted to go over it a little bit uh but yeah so just to end that again guys uh make sure that you use uh, we have a bunch of codes uh 2024 black 24 i think tux 24 one dash 800 uh monarotopia there's a bunch of codes that you can use 10 percent off again i recommend vip ticket dinner a bunch of stuff but Hopefully that will come to the conference. And uh, that was it. Thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. It, it, it really helps. Um, essentially when, of course, people are trying to censor Monero. So.